Hello awesome people, I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at The Legend of Huma, a novel by Richard A. Knack. This is the first short story or novel that we've read by Richard A. Knack uh, as a part of this uh, review series. Uh, so we'll take a little bit look at what some of the things that he did. This was a best-selling novel. Uh, I've read this once before when I was in junior high and I um, it was at the time it was my favorite a novel after the first six by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. So after reading those, I'm going straight to this uh, 1988 uh, novel. It's pretty interesting that a lot of these early sort of New York Times bestsellers uh, from these uh, genre fictions uh, were by writers who were early, who, for, for whom this was their first novel. Weiss and Hickman kicked off the Dragon Alliance series, the first sort of, you know, uh, fiction that was set in the D&D universe, and that was a big hit. Uh, and they've now written, you know, six novels by the time this is over with in, in, a few years later in, in 88, all of which were New York Times bestsellers. Um, Richard A. Knack, this is his first novel. It's going to be a New York Times bestseller. Uh, you know, uh, kicking off the Forgotten Realms, was Douglas Niles, who had written some modules, but this is his first novel. It's just, it's it's a big hit. Ari Salvatore's next. He has a best-selling novel, uh, and it introduces the Drift Sword in a series that still has lots and lots of books in it. He still comes to it occasionally. Um, so, you know, both of those were brand new writers. Uh, so, uh, for the first time novelists. So there's, there's a lot of this sort of thing. Uh, and I think that shows a trust, I think, on, on their part. These, these writers are good. Uh, they're good stuff. Uh, we'll have them kick off our stuff, right? Uh, I think there's some value in that, rather than just using established writers. Um, Richard A. Knack will go on to, to publish a lot of stuff uh, in, in other serials. His first short story that he published was in the Dragonlance series. He's only published three by now, by the time he does his first novel. Uh, all of those three are in the Dragonlance. Um, he's mostly known uh, for doing novels in series. He did Diablo, six novels, ten novels in the Warcraft series, that sort of a thing. Uh, he's also done some more novels in the... Uh, in the Korean mythology, which I've read, um, and we'll do Kaz the Minotaur next uh, as my next big read, uh, which is the sequel to this short story that was written a couple of years later by Knack. I also follow Knack to the Dragon Crown series, uh, which is uh, a fantasy, a high fantasy short series. So I enjoy Knack. Um, I would have given this an eight uh, out, of, out of 10 if you had asked me to give it uh, a sort of evaluation when I was a teen. Uh, it's probably more of a seven now uh, that I'm going back to it, um, having not, not touched it since junior high or any of the other spinoffs or sequels uh, or prequels. Uh, I do think that Knack does a good job of this established story that was already told in the Dragonlance Chronicles and Legends series. Uh, we had the Song of Huma we, that we've read uh, that already tells this tale. He is a, a highlight uh, for one of our key characters, Stern Brightblade, who's also a Ninus and Lamnia, like, just like he is. Uh, he's he's you know held up as this hero, uh, bigger than life figure, uh, and I think that Nack does a good job describing this. I also think that this is much more well paced uh, than the six previous novels that we did by Weiss and Hickman. As a reminder, uh, Weiss and Hickman I would have given a nine to. Uh, if you had asked me to evaluate them back after I read them for the third time in college for the first series, I'm giving it a seven out of ten now. Um, I would have given uh, their their sequel, the Little Legends series. Uh, an uh, eight out of ten when I was a teenager and I read them for the first time, and then and I haven't touched them since. I'm going back and reading them now. You know, as a 45 year old adult, I'm giving them a six out of ten rather than a seven out of ten. I think both of those are a little long in the tooth. Uh, they're 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 too episodic. There's not they're they're missing. They have too many uh, things that are side notes rather than key parts. I think the third uh, novel, for example, has a whole like day long reading section. It's like an hour and a half where they're just taking taking a deep dive in the middle of like nothing happening, right? uh, where nothing happens to the plot or advances the plot in any major way. Uh, and I think that you could have could have removed that. I also think that the, that the next trilogy it could have been just one book uh, rather than three books. I think the, the first three books tells in, in a trilogy tells tells the War of the Lands, and and this book tells the war the Third Dragon War in one book. And it's much better pace. I'm giving this a 7 out of 10, too, just like I gave the first trilogy uh, to uh, each of those books. It's, it's well paced. It's well done. It's a good debut for Knack. And again, as of when I uh, before I read this, this was, was my favorite spinoff or, or prequel uh, book by another writer in this in the series. Right now, it still is going back to it, even though I probably would have dropped my junior high to, to, to a middle-aged man nine for, uh, and, and nine's. 
uh, to sevens and sixes. Um, but anyway, uh, there you are. Uh, that's sort of why I rated it and why why I rated it. Uh, now again, um, this is this 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 book is steeped in Dungeons and Dragons things, as as Richard and Nack will talk about. Um, everything that happens in this book is something that happens by the rules of the game uh, system that it's based in. Uh, so if you go into this having played the game, then you'll definitely find a lot of things that are familiar. And a lot of people uh, that read uh, the Dragonlance uh, stuff fiction first and then went to play the game because they really enjoyed uh, this as sort of their feet getting wet. And, and a lot of people did that. I also know a lot of the people who, even though they were you know, my age, and they were, you know, teenagers at the time of this stuff, and they were fantasy fans at the time, and they were playing Dungeons and Dragons at the time. They still never read any Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons novels, uh, and I do think that the Dragon Lance is very nicely done uh, uh, as a place to start, as you know, as a series. I think you can start with the Chronicles, knock out the Legends, uh, and then I think Legend of Whom is a good place to go next. It was published really soon thereafter. It's the this is the first novel. And the Dragonlance series that does not involve characters that were from uh, the original trilogy, uh, from the Legends or the prequels, uh, and those sorts of things. Uh, so as a result, this is the first one. It kicks off the Heroes uh, series. Uh, since you're already familiar with the character of Huma and, and the other characters from this stuff we talked about, it's, it's, it's a good thing to go to next. Um, and it'll be the next thing. Again, I'll go to the sequel next, Kaz the Minotaur, by one Richard A. Knack. His best-selling work. Um, so there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you. Have you read this novel? What did you think about it? Did you think it was also a 7 out of 10? Did you think it better? Did you think it was worse? I would be happy to engage you with it further in the comments below. I try to keep these reviews spoiler-free, so that way, in case you've never read this novel, like most of my friends, uh, I can you can still go and read it and you won't be spoiled. But if you want to talk about spoilers, feel free encouraged to do so in the comments below. I would be happy to engage you with it further. If you enjoyed this novel, why not hit that subscribe button? I'll be happy to do many more of these sorts of things in the future. So if you like this one, feel free to hit the subscribe button. And then finally, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling, and I appreciate it. Thanks again, and have an amazing day.